thing that John talked to based anti-cancer compound. Before I do that, I'm going to talk to you about platinum itself, which I'm sure most of you would have heard of in terms of jewelry. And I'm also going to talk to you about metals in your body, which your body needs to actually survive. Along with using metals as a type of medicine for different types of diseases, along with my own research and where I'm currently at with that research. So, uh, platinum was probably first found in the 18th century by this man here, and it's quite often mistaken for silver because of the similarities, of course, in the way it looks, which is probably where it got its name from, platina meaning little silver. So, it's quite, a, it's quite a rare metal, it's a very silvery type of metal if anybody's ever seen it, or lucky enough to get a platinum ring for a wedding by any chance. And it's currently very expensive, $1,800 per ounce. Now, you compare that to, say, gold, which is around $1,500 per ounce, so there's quite a significant difference. And if you have platinum at the moment, sell what you can. <laughs> at the same time, 239 tons are produced every single year. Now, it seems like quite a large figure for such a rare element, but if you look at, say, gold, 2,500 tons of gold are produced every year. Difference. And of that 239 tons, 54% um, is used for the catalytic converter in your car, which is the thing that converts all those bad gases into more environmentally friendly gases. And 21% is used for jewelry, like I mentioned, for wedding rings and so on. And the rest of it is used for electronics, like spark plugs and other types of catalysis. And therefore, you get 99%. The other 1% is what I do, anti-cancer research. Before I tell you about that, Metals and your body are very much intertwined because your body needs certain metals in order to survive. Iron, you probably mostly know of to get from red meat and things, and it's used for transporting oxygen around your body. So when you breathe in oxygen, iron-based compounds to various parts of your body. Other things like potassium and zinc are also used by your body. So it's not unusual for your body to have metals in it. So I'm more interested in using metals for medicine, for, for medicine for treatment of different types of diseases. And gold is probably the longest known one used for this type of treatment. And the ancient Egyptians were so obsessed with this, they literally ate it for breakfast. They used to grind it up in small pieces and actually give it to people who had ate and which now of course we know is arthritis. And 5,000 years later, scientists and indeed doctors now use gold-based compounds for primary treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So, I'm more interested in platinum. And there is other types of metals that can also be used for various different things, including vanadium, which is used for uh, diabetes. And these type of metal-based compounds can be used, or sorry, they, they interact with the body with DNA and proteins. So, here it is, cisplatin, first ever metal-based compound ever used for a, a medical treatment for a disease. Time, but nobody knew of its anti cancer properties until the 1960s when this man here, who actually only died very recently, actually found that it prevented cells from dividing. So, after a bit of research, it was discovered that it's quite useful for these types of cancers right here. And the structure of it, that X structure, is very, very it works. The PT in the middle is platinum, CM is chlorine, compound, but very effective. Much as it was in the 1960s. So, how does it work? Once it gets into the bloodstream, usually by intravenous injection, you get an injection for chemotherapy, uh, it enters the cancer cell via the membrane. The membrane is basically like a skin on the outside of the cell. Once it enters that, it coordinates with DNA. Now, cancer cells are basically the very same as your regular cells in your body, except that they mutate and they're slightly dividing faster than regular cells. So they have DNA just the same way every other cell does. And once it coordinates with DNA, what it does is, like throwing a wrench into a machine, it basically stops the DNA from replicating, which stops the cell from replicating, and therefore the cell dies, and as a result, cancer dies. Now the structure of it, that X structure, is very important for how that works, because without that structure, it wouldn't coordinate with the DNA. It's like a lock and key mechanism. It just happens that that structure fits in perfectly with DNA. So if it's that easy, what happens if you're cancer? Over 8 million people die every year of different types of cancer. But the side effects of the chemotherapy are also quite serious. And a lot of people here probably know that you lose your hair from chemotherapy, but other side effects like nausea, vomiting, hearing loss, kidney damage are, are, are much, much worse than any hair loss. A sick plan has these side effects. But one of the things that was an entirely new area of research that didn't exist before us, and that's metal-based anti-cancer research. The newest one down here, the first, the first of the new ones, Carol 
platen down the left hand side there, it's very, very similar in structure, but slightly different. And that difference prevents an enormous amount of side effects, simply by changing the chlorides to this. Now, it's not as effective as this platen for treatment, but there's a lot less side effects. Same with this one in the middle, oxalic platen, which is a very recent, 2002. And the newest one here on the far side, which is still in clinical trials at the moment, but it's very unique in the fact that it does need to be an injection instead of being taken as a tablet, which is obviously much more convenient. So what do I do? There's five stages of this type of research. One, you have to design a compound, and after 40 years of research, we now know exactly what's effective for these compounds and what doesn't work. So after a lot of research of my own accord, I have these new compounds designed, then you make them in the lab, and then you test to see if they're stable in case they, they fall apart in the bloodstream, obviously, which is not very desirable. So here's a new one. And the left hand side here, you see one of mine. And I, I know no good chemist would be good without the electrical structure, so here's one. And this is it here. And it's very stable. And it's very stable, it doesn't fall apart, which is very important. And it's stable at 37 degrees, which of course is body temperature. So you don't want it falling apart before aside to the cancer cell, which is one of the reasons for the side effects of cisplatin. So, where am I currently at? The final two steps of the research is testing on cancer cells, and then the ultimate testing is on humans' clinical trials. So, at the moment, I'm at testing your biomolecules, which are amino acids in your body, and they're taught that these amino acids are the ones that, pre that prevent the drug from doing its work. And most of my compounds don't coordinate with it. Some of them do, but not all of them. I've made 16 of them. Because the chances are the more you make, the more chance you're finding one that works. Now some of them are very effective and some of them aren't. Now I haven't got off the test on cancer cells yet, and that's where I'm currently at. So to conclude, I told you about platinum, and it's quite expensive. Uh, I told you about gold and how it's used for rheumatoid arthritis, cisplatin, which is the first metal-based compound platinum based. And at the moment, hopefully over the next year or so, my final year of my PhD. I'll be able to test these compounds on cancer cells and hopefully I'll find at least one that works very well and helps somebody with cancer in the world. So I acknowledge my supervisor, Dr. Rosalie Gould, and everybody else who's helped me so far. Thank you very much.